Welcome to Access 2010 Create a Database. I'm Trainer Laurie. Creating a database? Well, we're going to first create a new blank database, create three tables with fields, create relationships, set field properties, create a form, and test it. All the steps to creating a database from scratch. So the database that we're going to create is a vet's clinic. It's one vet and we want to keep track of their customers. So the first thing you want to do is think it through. I would guess that it's going to take about a week of think time to be able to create this database, but I'm going to give you some help today, of course. And so we will ask the question, one blank has many blanks. And our goal is to fill in those blanks, and those blanks become the tables. For example, one customer has many pets. And so customer and pets becomes a table, each one becomes a table. And then I could probably say one pet has many visits. And then we would have three tables. So that's what we're going to create today, three tables. One customer has many pets, one pet has many visits. And this is database theory. There are uh, I have other classes on database theory if you don't understand this concept. Then we'll go to File New, Blank Database, and we'll give it a name. I'm calling it My Pet Project and then hit Create. We're going to add three tables with fields. And just for your information, a table is the same as an Excel worksheet, and a field is the same as an Excel column. So that's what we mean by tables and fields. The first table we're going to create using application parts, which is a pre-built table, essentially. So we'll go to Create Application Parts, and there's one in there called Contacts. Even though we want customers, it's pretty close. So we're going to just make some minor changes and use these quick start tools. So when you go to Contacts, you can see it says Company, Last Name, First Name. So you can see exactly what it looks like. Right-click on the table name and rename it. Uh, so instead of it being called contacts, it will be called customers. So rename the table to customers. Then our second table, we will import from Excel. So if, if that's the way your tables are already, this is, you'll do the same thing. So this is what it looks like in Excel. And you can see it has field names, and it has at least one row of data. You should have more than one, but the first row should con uh, contain head headers, and the second one should contain data. And th that data should be complete. Make sure there's something in every field. Then we'll go to External Data, and then choose Import from Excel. And it'll say Files of Type, and make sure it says Excel, and find it. In this case, we'll call Import Pets. You want to import it? Do you want to append it or link it? If you import it, then it will now be in Access, but you will also have the one in Excel. If you link it, you only have one, and you will see it in Access and Excel, but you'll only have one table, and it will have all the capabilities of Excel. But if you import it, it will have all the capabilities of Access. So we want to import it. When we import it, it's a five-step wizard. The first one asks, what worksheet is it in? If you have a named range, then it's okay to use that, but uh, we have it in a worksheet, so we'll say worksheet. Then it asks, does the fir first row contain in column headings? We were sure to do that. Make sure that uh, they're bold so that it does know that you have column headings. Then you can choose if you want to import or not import, and you can change the data type right here. Then because Excel does not require a primary key, but Access does, we want to let Access add a primary key. Then it says, what would you like to call it? We'll call this Pets. And it'll say, is this something that you're going to import on a regular basis? If so, you'll want to save the import steps, which is great if you are, but we're not. So we will not check that. We'll just say Close. Now we've opened our Pets table. Uh, because it's, it was imported from Excel, we want to make some minor changes to it. So we'll go into Design View and th simply right-click on the table name, choose Design View, and we're going to change the field name ID to Pet ID. I think it's important when you name your, uh, especially your primary keys, that you name it after the table. Naming convention is very important in Access. In other words, how you name things. We're going to right-click on the field name, Pet Name, and we're going to insert some rows there. The first row we're going to insert is Customer ID. We want to make sure that that's there because that is the foreign key from the customer table. And make sure it's a number because Customer ID in the customer table was an auto number. That means it must link to a number. So this data type will be number. 
then close and save. Now our third table we're going to create in design view. So we've created one using a template and we created one using import and now we're going to create one using design view. So we'll go to create table design and notice it is a table with nothing in it. So you have to fill in the blanks. So we're going to start typing. And we're first we'll have a, a primary key of visits ID, that's our auto number, that's, and then pet ID, that is our foreign key from the pets table, and that's number because it has to link to a number if it's an auto number. The visit date, which is a date time field, total amount, which is currency, and invoiced, and you might even put a question mark after invoice because it is a yes no question. Make sure that you click the primary key next to visits ID. Uh, so click on visits ID and then go click the primary key that will turn that field into the primary key. Then we're going to save it. Right mouse click on the field name, on the table name, and hit save. And we'll save it as visits. And then close. Now we have three tables and three primary keys plus two foreign keys. So the primary key is here, here, and here. You can tell by the keys and two foreign keys. You can only tell by the field name that those are foreign keys because they have ID and they're named after a table. So customer ID is linked now to customer ID. At least we want it to be. It isn't linked yet, but we have a place to link it in relationships. Now we want to go to relationships. That's under database tools. Click relationships and we want to add all the tables. If you want to add them all at once, highlight them all using shift and click and then hit add. Now we're going to click the primary key customers and drag it to the foreign key. When we do that, the edit relationships window opens and it says looks like customer ID and customer ID are the same. If they're the same, then we want to enforce referential integrity and this is the data cop protecting our data making sure we don't accidentally delete a parent when we have a child. Then we want to click the next primary key and drag it to the foreign key. That's pet ID to pet ID and make sure that you enforce referential integrity. And you can see that this is a one-to-many relationship which is exactly what we want. Access reads relationships from one to many left to right. So if we're going to add a new pet, first we'd have to have a customer. You see a customer and then a pet. And then if we want to visit, we have to have a pet. So customers first and then pets and then visits. When you have time, you go into field properties, the back door into code, and this helps prevent data entry error. So we open up our tables in design view, right click on it and choose design view. You'll want to change your um, field size for something like state and province to two, especially if you're only going to put a two-letter abbreviation in, and also put in a default value. For example, if all your customers are in Florida, then you would want to put a default value of FL in. Notice default values are always in quotation marks, but that means every time you have a new record, it will put that default value in for you. Of course, you can always type over it if you want. You can even change the default value anytime you need to. Under the visits table, you might want to change the currency under total amount to having two decimal places. You can put a caption in it, and we can have a default value of 30. It's always going to be a $30 fee to go in. If you want a default value for the date, in other words, today's date to always appear, then we'll go to visit date, and under default value, we'll put in equal date, paren, paren, open and close parentheses, and that will automatically put in today's date. And now in the pets table, you might want to go to type of animal and make a lookup wizard. When you choose lookup wizard, you can have a list of the kinds of animals that might go in there. So because we don't have a table with that in there, we will type in the values that we want. And then you, you have to choose one column and type in the number. And make sure you only use tabs in here. If you use enter, you will automatically move to the next step of the wizard. And then give it a label and click finish. Now to create a form, we click on Create, and make sure you're clicked on the table first, Customers Table, and then Create Form, and it automatically creates a beautiful form. Now we could make some changes to it, but at this point it's, it's perfect, it's exactly what we want, so we'll just save it. Then I recommend that you add at least three records to test it. So add a customer, and then 
you add a pet down below and then once you've added a pet you can click the plus sign to add a visit. That's all this time. If you like it, please click like. We'll see you next time. Thanks.